Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go over reassembly of the GHK AK's fire control group. Uh, if you are looking to disassemble, check out my video on disassembly as well. So what we're going to need for this, I like to use a dental pick, uh, but you can also use a uh, small screwdriver. You'll likely need a set of needle nose pliers. You'll need your sears and springs, and I like to use a punch uh, at times for getting things in place. Uh, generally, I'll use the punch for disassembly more than assembly. Uh, and then lastly, a screwdriver uh, to pop the uh, circlips in place. So to touch on a couple things first, there are three pins. These pins need to be in the correct location. If you have them in the incorrect location, your rifle will not work correctly. The one with all the bumps on it goes furthest to the front. These bumps help with alignment and make sure that your, uh, your firing pin rides in that middle one. These two are the ones that most commonly get mistaken. This one, just a regular straight pin, is for your trigger, so furthest to the back. And the one that's got this extra shim on it is your middle pin, and that is for your hammer. That extra shim helps make sure that your hammer is centered. If you mix these up, your hammer will wiggle back and forth, and your trigger won't go in place. So. Let's get started. I like to start with my hammer, but you can start in whatever order you see fit. We have a few main portions to assembling our hammer. We are going to need our two part hammer or one part if you've replaced it with a WNS or a Hephaestus unit and our springs. This spring will go on the left side and with the long section facing down. And this spring will go on this side facing towards the selector with the spring portions facing down, with the legs of the spring facing down. A couple things of note, there are little notches on the trigger. You'll wanna make sure that this is aligned like that with that leg over top of the notch. If you mix this up and have that leg underneath the notch, your trigger will not reset. On the other side, you have a similar notch, this time on this top portion, and this spring is going to sit underneath that notch, just like that, and that, again, helps make sure that we're resetting. If you have that above the notch, or you have it with the long side facing out, you will likely have issues. So we've got our four portions there. We will additionally need this sear, which sits right on top. And at this point, you can install it with the firing pin in place. I often like to, uh, just as it makes it a little easier uh, with your uh, to make sure that the spring doesn't get messed up. So, let's get started. Again, we are using not this pin, this pin. We do not have a shim at the top. So let's go ahead and drop everything in place. There we go. We've got our multiple parts there. I sometimes like to slip my front pin in place simply so I can have a spot to rest my firing pin once I hook it in place. This is where that dental pick can come in very handy as you can get things lined up. There we go. We got our captive there. And we can set that in place. There we go. 
You'll notice that that likes to pull itself forward. So you're gonna have to kind of make sure that everything aligns. So let's go ahead and drop this left spring in. Again, long edge facing down. I'm gonna topple that off of there. Long edge facing down, and this is again where a dental pick or something similar comes in handy uh, to make sure that we're lined up. We want to make sure that that spring is underneath the notch, but we can go ahead and handle that here shortly. So let's go ahead and get our pin in place. Which I'll put over here. So we'll go ahead and slip the pin in from the left side of the gun. This is from the side that does not have our selector. And we're just moving it one piece at a time. We've got multiple holes that we're gonna need to line up, a hole here, a hole here, a hole through the center of this, and then on through the side. So we just take it one at a time. We've got it through the spring, and these first two, for the sear, you will need to push it down a little to get that pin through. It has a spring on the back side here that is pushing that up. And we can go ahead and wiggle a little more. Sometimes these do not want to seat as we are experiencing today. If you are running into difficulties, I had this on auto. I like to set it all the way to semi, as you can make sure that the trigger is seated in place, which can help make sure that we have proper alignment. Our firing pin fell off there, so we'll just get that out of the way. We'll deal with that later. There we go. And we can see here, the pin is all the way through to the other side. At this point, I like to make sure that the spring is in its correct place. Underneath that notch. There we go. The spring is underneath the notch on the left side of the trigger. And so we're going to back this pin out just a little so we can get our final spring in there. We'll go ahead and put that final spring in. And again, we want to make sure that it is on top of the notch on the back side of the trigger. For this, I like to just take a thumb and push down and we can see that we are able to pop that right through. And then just make sure that we're aligned. And we are all the way through with our trigger. This is not the end. You will need to clip these in place. There are three circlips that hold each of the pins in place. And this is another common spot where folks mix things up. One has a flat bottom to it and two have these rounded edges. The flat bottomed one is for our trigger and the other two are for our hammer and forward pins. So let's go ahead and drop that first one in place. A needle nose pliers to bring it in place. To seat these, I like to take one hand and press on the pin from one side of the gun, make sure that it is aligned up top, and then just lightly pop it into place. These do not take much force. I see some folks pounding on them with a hammer. You do not need to do that. It is a good way to damage things. So we can move on to our second pin and 
uh, go from there. So for this we will need our hammer, our hammer spring, our pin for that, one of those two rounded bottom C-clips, and our firing pin. Our firing pin rides through the middle of the hammer like this, and so you will be running the pin through both of those. I like to, for this, use that front pin to make sure that the firing pin is held into place and pulled forward so you're able to line this up. Otherwise, as the firing pin will be under spring tension, uh, it's constantly wanting to slip back. So, first step is to hook the firing pin back on our trigger. There we go. You're in place with that. I'm going to put that front pin through so we can just hold that captive up there. If it slips off, no worries. Everything's a process. Now we can go ahead and put our hammer and hammer spring in place. The hammer is going to be seated like this with our hammer spring seated like that. And the spring of the hammer is going to be faced towards the rear of the gun. So this, if you just try to shove it in place, will catch on your guide rails. So you'll need to angle that in just a little bit and make sure the center of that lines up with our firing pin. So we can see that our firing pin is resting right in the middle of that. And now we can go ahead and put in that second pin, the one with a little shim on the top. And slip that on through. We can see that we are most of the way through now. And all the way through. I like to adjust the selector. Uh, this pin can get stuck part way out, just ever so slightly out. Uh, pop the selector up to auto or safe uh, so you can look on the left side and make sure that that is flush. Uh, when fully seated, it should be flush with the side of the receiver. Now, a couple things to note here. Once we put in the C-clip, there we are going to want it flush up with the back side of the receiver back here. There's another little notch here right next to the hammer. Uh, I've seen folks make the mistake of putting that clip there. If you put it there, this pin will be allowed to wiggle and you'll have that issue where it'll kind of pop out of place. So we want to make sure it's in its correct position. And let's see if we can make this as difficult of a process as we did with the last pin. There we go, we are tucked in place. And again, I like to just seat that right over the top of the pin and then use a hold pressure on one side and use a screwdriver to gently click that in place. You could hear that positive click. And at this point, our trigger, all of that is in place, our hammer is in place. I like to check function at this point to make sure our firing pin is moving forward, our hammer is moving correctly, our trigger is moving. If we put things in safe, that's working. If we move it into safe or into semi, we can see things are functioning correctly as well. So we are good to go at this point. I'm going to go ahead and move that back and we want to release tension off of the hammer because if we move it back and then try to pull out this pin, the uh, firing pin sear is going to be under a lot of backwards pressure. So let's go ahead and release that. And we can slip this front pin out. Now, 
I moved that back so we can see because the firing pin is now caught on the bottom side of the magwell. So what we will need for this last section are our final remaining pin, our final remaining circlip, and our two springs, and then our remaining sears. Uh, this one is on the left side of the receiver and is the cutoff lever, so if your magazine runs dry, it pops that up and uh, makes it so your gun stops firing. Uh, this one is our auto sear for over here. Okay. So let's start with one and then move forward from there. I like to take these one at a time. It's pretty easy to kind of get this in place and then slowly move forward. You can see if you line these springs up that there's only one way that the spring will work. There's a little captive spot right there where that end of the spring is going to catch into. This is going to be snug up against the side. There and our pin is going to go through. So, let's notch this into place. We can again notice as well, if we put this in this way, this spring is going to hang over the edge. So it's pretty clear which direction we need to put it. It's kind of slowly logicking your way through reassembly can be a solid way to do this. Once we have that one aligned, we'll go ahead and slip that pin through the side of the gun. And there we go. This pin has a tendency to get caught because we have all those nice little bumps on the side. Uh, so if you are running into issues with that, that is okay and lifted up our firing pin just a little so we could sneak underneath. And we can see that we are all the way through. We can see that with tension on that, that will move back and forth, but we don't have any tension there right now because we also don't have our last sear in. So let's go ahead and do that. This final sear sits like this, and there's a little ledge on the edge of the sear that our spring catches on. A common issue uh, that I've come across is either this spring has gotten bent or this little shelf has gotten a little worn. Uh, one thing that you can do to address that uh, that I've done here is you can see that that's ever so slightly bent out. And so it's putting it's constantly under a little bit of pressure on there to make sure that it is captive. So let's go ahead and drop that in line and slip the pin the rest of the way through. As this pin has multiple bump outs on it, you will likely need to wiggle it slightly and move some of the sears uh, to make sure that everything is lining up and everything is in place. So we can see here, we are now fully in place and we are good to go. Now it comes time to put our final circlip in place. And so we can go ahead and drop that in. Use a screwdriver again to just notch that down. If it is not going in like this one isn't, just back off and make sure that it's going in the right spot. There we go. And we are in place. That is secure. Perfect. We can see we've got proper function of everything that is fully resetting. Uh, we are, if we pull our trigger, this is catching. 
that is pulled forward, that is moving. There we are. I like to fully check function before reassembling, but we are good to go. This has a WNS full travel kit, in, so I will go ahead and put that in place. Uh, if you are using the standard, you'll have the little buffer there. Uh, this does not have the buffer. Uh, it just has a 3D printed buffer uh, that is available on Cults 3D for anyone interested. There we go. And we fell out of the vise. Perfect. At this point, we are good to go. We can see that our pins are correctly seated. We are nice and flush. We can see that our other side, the pins are fully seated. And we can also see proper function. And we are good to go. Thanks for watching.